I've talked with you about this a lot. I can't remember if I've ever talked about it on the video, but I've talked about how I like kind of don't really like indie game music. Not categorically, but there's a lot of indie <laughs> games oh, yeah. that have music that I'm like, this is really basic, even to me knowing nothing about music. And I can actually give an example. My example is a song from Pizza Tower, but first of all, the Pizza Sour Tower soundtrack is really fucking good. Everybody already knows this. And even the song that I'm going to give an example of is really good, but the beginning of it is um, like a perfect encapsulation of what of like issues I have with a lot of indie game music. Where it's like this song, the beginning of the song is like, it's just like one little instrument just like playing the melody. Like okay. while just a drum is playing in the background. You're saying it's just very loopy? It's it's, like it's, it's, it's it's not very... The background is just loop patterns, but then there's a melody on top of it? Yeah, I guess. Oh, I mean, shit. really, I just think of it as the song is just like boring at the beginning. I guess you could call it loopy. I mean, again, the song overall is really good because it slowly adds instruments over the course of the song. It's just like, I made a melody and I didn't really evolve the song beyond that, pretty I much. See. I don't know, there's probably somebody out there that'll have an issue with me saying that, which is, you know, think, fair um, enough. You know what's interesting is... I just slipped through time. Goodbye. <laughs> slip on through the other time. This is, the, this is the place. This is where... On my channel, Bart's Goes to Jail takes place this time. It's, it is, yeah. I think about, like, indie game music myself sometimes, and, and that... The music that indie game music is inspired by, the old days, nine, 90s shit, like, all that music, video game music, you, when you look at... Not necessarily 90s, but just old time, older times. Yeah. You look at um, like what their inspirations were. Like Nobuo Uematsu, I think one of his inspirations was like Electric Light Orchestra, like a progressive rock band from the 70s. They have like very, very varied musical inspirations because they're, you know, they like music. <laughs> they listen to lots of different music. Even the composer from Disgaea, one of his biggest inspirations, he said, is Claude Debussy. Which was like, wow. Damn, that's random as hell. So what's interesting is they, those composers were inspired by lots of different, you know, music people from the history. But I feel like some indie game composers that maybe exhibit these symptoms you're talking about, they're purely only inspired by video game music. Mm. Yes. And they don't, they don't have as wide as wide of a breadth. So they're like, well, what is video game music? It's melodies on drums. That needn't be. Uh, <laughs> construed to say like music that's like primarily melodic is always exhibits that because if it did then wouldn't give a fuck about the original video game music in general i mean listen to old classic mega man music on the nest it's like people who composed that were very keenly like technically aware of how music worked and were able to make it very melodic using the four sound channels like very resourceful with the harmonies and stuff and it sounds good because there's a lot of finesse to it. So it's it's sort of like the opposite now. They use the same limitations, but they don't really understand why they're using it. I actually think that there is a lack of limitation in a way. Well, yeah, that that too. They, they try to imitate the limitations while at the same time lacking them. Banjo-Tooie was not the first... Oh, by the way, don't cast magic on this guy because he has an eight reflect. Okay, I didn't know what? that was fucking possible. <laughs> I didn't know it could reflect the... Ancient. Thanks for fucking proving it to me. I I believed you. <laughs> this dragon's pose kind of reminds me of that dog, weird dog with the Mario World credits music. <laughs> Even the video is just called Dog. Ukulele was not a great game because there was no limitations in place. But a big comparison point I see to it is Banjo Tooie because made by generally the same people, and they're both extremely overly big 3D platformer like collectathon games. But Ukulele had like had no restrictions in its development at all. But Banjo Tooie was at least limited by the N64, and it was like the game itself feels like it was motivated to show you, like, look how big we can make an N64 game. There's limitations, but they're trying to, like, they're using the limitations in a way to say, look at what you can do with, like, kind of limited technology at the time. But ukulele is just balls out, just bullshit all the time. Just, like, everything's way too big, and the level design is just not great. And 
you know, Some you can level design. apply that to uh, to music, like indie game music too. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. I, was, I said that in an extremely roundabout way, but that's what I'm trying to say. Discord has cr uh, credits, and it has like a credits theme when you look at the credits. Wait, really? Yes, and the credits music is this like eight bit thing. The harmony is like a chord of like four square waves, and it sounds awful. <laughs> because it's because it's supposed to be like oh it's like an NES game it's like uh, square waves and stuff but the NES wasn't blasting four of them at once in the same pitch range. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that is limited amount of channels, motherfucker. A lot of resources that games uh, could use on the NES came from the cartridge itself. So later NES game sometimes gave just gave themselves more sound channels. Have you already talked about how awful it is when? People are like, this didn't have to go this hard. <laughs> For you, multiple reasons. Last recording session, you talked about how much you hate, like, people in comments saying, like, I don't know what you're talking yeah, about, yeah, that, but you sound like you do. One, just, just from a valuation of art perspective, it's like, why fuck not didn't it have to be this good? The person <laughs> who made it wanted to make something good, so they made something good. It's not like, oh, I can't believe this fucking... Stupid old game has such a good song in it. They, these people are old. You're telling me old people can make good things? But also combined with the fact that I hate the phrase goes hard. It's just a <laughs> catastrophe. That's unrelated though. Or maybe it is related. It's sort of related. Can you put me in the front row? I'm a ninja. Oh yeah. <laughs> you should have said something. You should have said, why am I in the back row? <laughs> well, yeah, I'd say that every... Part, but I get more angry every time I say <laughs> God damn it. Back row oh, bullshit. Like, and I don't even like how the I don't even like the phrase goes hard. Why the fuck am I in the back row? <laughs> if they had ever made a sequel to Crystal Chronicles, which they didn't, it would have been cool to have the same way you have combining spells, just combining like material just throwing materials at each other to make things. Isn't that what Minecraft is? No. Donkey recently uploaded his video on Penny's Big Breakaway, the 3D platformer, I guess, by the Sonic Mania team. Oh. Uh, visually, it looks cool. It definitely, you know, we were complaining about, like, the use of the word movement in games. Like, no. or in, like, that people use, like, Oh, yeah. his movement is so good. Yeah, just... And uh, that's Penny's big breakaway, basically, is like, yo, this movement, though, the video game. And Ugh. it looks, you know, it looks fun enough. It's very clear that a lot of effort has gone into that game. And yet, you know, the level design actually looks pretty cool when you're not just skipping it entirely with the fucking yo-yo. There's two main takeaways that I had from Donkey's video about it, which is that one, the level design does not seem very well suited. Oh, fuck, what the hell, these guys are floating. The level design does not seem kind of, does not seem suited for the very aerial movement based game. And two, there's a combo meter, like, that's taking up a third of the screen at all times. <laughs> And doing literally anything increases the combo. It's like, Donkey got like a hundred combo in like a minute. And it really makes me appreciate stuff like Devil May Cry or Pizza Tower where it's obvious to me that they put a lot of um, thought into the combo system and like, like keeping up your combo and stuff. And Penny's Big Breakaway it just seems like you jumped here, have a have an extension on your combo. And I don't even know and like your points are so high by the end of the level, I don't even really know what to make of the score that you get. It just struck me as like you know, in Pizza Tower, the idea of keeping one combo through the entire level to get the maximum rank was actually a decision that the dev slash devs made like pretty far on into development, and you can definitely feel that with how deliberate you have to be to maintain your combo. So it's weird that a game made by the Sonic Mania people is so non-deliberate about it. They knew what people liked about classic Sonic level design, but they don't seem to understand what makes a good combo system. I mean, the fact that there's a combo system in a 3D platformer in the first place is kind of weird, but, you know, I'm not gonna 
I'm not gonna dismiss that. I can't really say anything else without repeating myself, but just... I mean, I can say again that the combo the combo thing doesn't need to take up literally one-third of the screen. It is kind of easy to tell when some kind of decision in a game wasn't extremely deliberate. They were just like, people would think this is fun. <laughs> it's like how Pal World is just the amalgamation of every popular AAA game in the past ten years. <laughs> yeah. Although, I mean, Penny's Big Breakaway is not that bad. I think they just took a couple things that they like and just kind of put them in the game. Also, apparently, it actually has a surprisingly high amount of negative reviews on Steam, which I was surprised about. A couple of them mentioned the fact that the ledge grab doesn't work, and I, it actually failed to work quite a few times in Donkey's video, and I was like, how the fuck does the ledge grab work? Is it like, sometimes the yo-yo will just like go up to the ledge and then he'll just fall to his death anyway. For the record, I, I like, I enjoyed the video. It's just my, my takeaway of Penny's Big Breakaway specifically. Hold on, wrong like, uh, that game specifically is kind of where I was like, this game is not at all what I thought it would be. You know that game, Ultra Kill? I know that Kiwi's played and playing it a lot. I'm only vaguely <laughs> aware of it. I really yeah, don't, I don't know anything about it. I don't know much it. about it, but I was watching Kiwi play and that game is nonsense when, when you don't know what's going on. The way that I see people describe it makes it seem like it's ADHD, the video game. Honestly, I don't know. Like, that, that's what Pal World looked like to me. Pal World is like <laughs> so many things that are going on at once and there's no no time to breathe because they just want you to constantly be like stimulated. <laughs> it yeah, that's a very cynical way of looking at it, but you're definitely right. Sometimes when games have like pauses, little you know processes that take time. If you like use a mod that takes all those things away, you realize wow. Like okay, it's in Monster Hunter when you like cra are crafting stuff, there's little pauses in between when you're doing things. Like you press the buttons like do 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 created the thing. If you were to like add a mod to the game that made everything as like frame one as soon as you press it like gave you the thing, you'd realize like, oh, this is actually not as satisfying. In hindsight, I've kind of grown to appreciate Animal Crossing in the way that it wastes your time. Like whenever you go talk to Tom Nook to sell shit and he just doesn't shut the fuck up. Or like when you give fish or bugs to Blathers and he just, again, doesn't shut the hell up. He tells you about, like, the- he tells you about whatever you give him. And getting rid of the inconvenience kind of misses the point somewhat. That's not always true as well. Like, for example, you pick up a bomb in Ocarina of Time and it explains how to use bomb. Like, well, yes, that I sort mean, of thing. that- <laughs> like in, when That's I, too far in the other direction. Because I've been playing a shitload of Disgaea. Every time you go to a shop and they're like, Welcome to the shop! <laughs> And then you can use the shop. This isn't exactly what he meant, but um, there's a, in a Matthew Matosas video, he says that people think they don't want inconvenience, but they really do. Like you said, that's not it's really true, basic 100%. Game, but yeah. yeah, it's not 100% true all the time. Like, games should not be full of, like, no pauses or full of all pausing. For example, I still think, even though I love Stranger Paradise, the hold hold a button to do anything in that game that every other AAA game yeah. has is stupid as fuck. I started off by saying Stranger Paradise because I wanted to complain about the select button, but just any game that does that is on my shit list. Sometimes if you get rid of all the downtime, you're just left with nothing. I've actually been, because yeah. <laughs> we've been, I've been specifically recording all these Pokemon playthroughs with people, and I have the animations on just as some kind of visual stimulus. Yeah. And even though all the animations are extremely repetitive, especially because I'm only using one Pokemon, I can have four moves at once, I actually enjoy it more than I thought I would. I think that's part of why I always make fun of the fast forward button in Final Fantasy XII. Because <laughs> I'm like, well then, if you didn't actually want the fucking slowness, why is it there? <laughs> I, I do agree with you on that, and I actually... That game is slow, and I'm sure many people do appreciate the speed-up, but I actually really like playing it without the speed-up, just because it gives a much greater scope of how fucking big the world is. Some yeah. people just call it, like, tedious, Yeah, that's, a, that's but... a good example of valuable slowness, is like, when it takes a while to get from point A to point B, you actually feel like you're having an adventure. 
I could actually um, like, use that as like a thing against Maple Story. Like, yeah. you can say whatever about Maple oh, Story. Like, like, it's an MMO and it's got a bunch of fucking problems. This doesn't apply to Maple Story anymore because the game is just given in. Everything needs to be instant gratification. But pre Big Bang Maple Story, as tedious as it was, really did give me a greater appreciation for the world because of how tedious it was to trek everywhere. Oh god, that's really... If you wanted to get around, you either need to spend money or spend a resource. Time being one of your resources. Time, yeah, exactly. And like the, uh, I actually really liked the, the, the ships that everyone would travel in. You had to travel in like real time. I loved that. I honestly do like the idea of that because it accomplishes both the world feeling... <laughs> It comes both the world feels big and also the world feels like it's something. Like you're part of a world that's that's moving. Not at you like Not you're just playing a video game. Not at your own pace, like the world is going and you're just part of it. Uh Chocob. Fat Chocobo. Uh, Chocobo kick. Oh. Still killed them though. <laughs> Look at that dog skin in the background. Yep. Like Fatty Bear's birthday surprise. <laughs> Dead! Okay, I didn't know you could do that. How long does that last? Forever, but I'm gonna haste us once once I get her back up. Okay, die. Now we just have to not physically attack him. Also, apparently they buffed the gold hairpin in Pixel Remaster because in this game it's halved rounding up. In Pixel Remaster it's halved roll, uh, rounding sun. down. Sorry, I, I saw a fight and I forgot you were using the, the staff. No, it's fight and white at the same time. Oh my god. Did you get it? You are there. You are him. You are there. You are there. Yeah. You are here. There's another italicized thing you can put on there. <laughs> you are there. And there is capitalized. <laughs> like a Parappa the Rapper subtitle. I also think that um, the Pixel Remaster. Because the scrolls in this game are ba the throw scrolls are based off your magic stat. I think they aren't anymore in Pixel Remaster because both a monk and a summoner throw the scrolls for the same damage. Come on! Oh. <laughs> Chocobo shows up and gets sucked into the <laughs> sucked into Atomos. Like no. Well, now I'll only summon Fat Chocobo at least. So Fat Chocobo will just fucking bounce itself into the void. <laughs> in Disgaea, you can turn off animations, but things still take time and you still have to like, move around. Because if those weren't still present, the game would literally be nothing. <laughs> but, however, the ultimate shoes do just make you teleport yeah. straight to location. But, you only get those for being boss as fuck, so it makes <laughs> sense. I actually would say that Disgaea is another example of that, where it's like, if you take away the waiting, then there's like nothing. Yeah, there's absolutely no game if you do that. You just go, you watch people go, ah, pff, ah, pff. That's why, that's why when I heard no that there flare. was auto mode in 5, I was like, or 6 maybe? I yeah, 6. When, uh, when Disguise 6 had been out for a while, I, I, for some reason, a video was recommended to me that was like, ultimate grinding method in Disguise 6, and a guy just like, literally just starts a map, and then just presses one button and then the map, the map just clears itself. Like, in literally like one second, like you don't even see anything happen, it's just... He hits like auto or something and then just goes stage clear. Because I wrote a script to grind in disguise, because that's how like go through the motions that game is. But like honestly, that was just like part of my experience with that game, because like the process of making the script was fun. Mm, I think we spilled some ink on our... Beige piece of paper. <laughs> this is hard to look at. Yeah, kind of. The but the music tile. is fucking it's, great. It's a bubble man. This is my favorite non-battle song in the game. It's pretty good. I think uh, I think my favorite song in the game is still the regular dungeon music. It's Final Fantasy. It's gonna have a good soundtrack. Uh, yeah. It didn't have to go that hard. <laughs> <laughs> is this the right blue? Did we ever figure that out? Is it supposed to be purple? It's it just looked, straight up blue here. It looked different on that too. It did. It's a completely different color. Wait, how did it look in the videos? I uh, never. I didn't actually pay attention. 